Uh, hi, Uwen. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name right, but uh, I just wanted to go ahead and uh, show you the uh, the script basically that I'm using. And uh, the, I, I think I figured out what the reason for it is, but I wanted to just make sure that we're on the same page. So uh, here goes nothing. Now, if you look here, uh, I agree with you in terms of how proportional filling works when you enable the trace flag. So I'm not going to go ahead and demonstrate that because on that part I'm with you in terms of when you enable the flag the proportional filling does actually take an, take effect. Uh, here what I'm trying to demonstrate is how the difference is when it's not enabled and I think I've identified exactly why you saw that behavior on your screen capture and uh, I'll demonstrate that here as well. So if you see here I'm again setting the trace flag to off. I'm using the master database and I'm creating my database. Uh, the key thing between uh, my database versus uh, the one that you're doing is the actual uh, growth settings. So let me just go ahead and drop this first. Yeah. So the trace flag is off and I've created a database but you'll see that my file growth is one megabyte compared to yours which was actually five megabyte. So now that the database is created I'm going to go ahead alter the database and create the table and look at the size so you'll notice that the size of the database is uh, 5 MB files which is correct from the initial s file size standpoint. Now I'm going to go ahead and insert uh, 2400 rows just like uh, your script. In fact this is actually your script. So when I do that uh, the execution is complete and now I'm going to go ahead and look at the size and you'll notice that the sizes are the same. Right? Now see what happens when I go ahead and change the auto growth settings to uh, file growth of uh, 512 um, uh, 5120 kilobytes uh, 5 MB basically so this time I'm just gonna run the entire thing in one shot and when I do uh, you'll see that okay just a second I should have dropped the database first so let me just go ahead and do that okay and I'll run this again Now you see the difference in terms of uh, the file size which is exactly the same as what you were seeing and I believe the reason for that is because that one extra row or a set of rows or that pages that got added was just enough to cross the boundary for the auto growth to take effect. Uh, a simple demonstration of this would be if I reduce the row count or the number of rows to uh, 2100 and then re-execute this script again you'll notice that this time it doesn't actually trigger the auto growth and we come back to the same file size. So essentially what I'm trying to say here is that the auto growth if predicted uh, if implemented correctly should actually average out the file size growth for both the files uh, over, over a period of time. Now uh, in a real world production scenario I rarely find uh, anybody who knows exactly how many rows are going to be inside their tables and for that reason even an approximate equivalent uh, file growth should be good enough for most cases without really having to enable or force the, uh, the proportional filling to take effect. So essentially uh, if you look here what, what's happening is that in this particular case as long as the file growth settings are correct for the majority of the part I think that you know the file sizes grow uh, in sync with each other and there's just occasional scenarios where you end up inserting just the right amount of rows which causes the auto growth to kick in and expand one file size beyond the other. A simple example would be you can see here at 2100 the sizes are the same and uh, if I go ahead and make it 2900 again it's uh, going to be the same it's just that exact 2500, 500-ish range, that additional 500 rows, uh, for example, uh, that actually causes the auto growth to kick in. And I would think that that shouldn't be the focus of what the developer or the DBA should be uh, trying to uh, implement from their database standpoint. Essentially, uh, you're always looking to fit the maximum criteria or the maximum scenarios possible rather than try to accommodate edge case scenarios like uh, what we have here, where we just insert exactly the right number of rows to cause auto growth to show the file sizes as being different. So this is essentially my point because, again, uh, I agree with what you demonstrated there. I'm totally in sync with you, and uh, I understand that behavior. Uh, what I was trying to point out here is, uh, was because... 
a participant in my training, especially from a SQL 2000 uh, background, came to me and said that they're using the trace flag 1118 in order to achieve proportional filling. And I explained to them that that's wrong because that's not what it's meant for. And if they were implementing this only to achieve proportional filling, then they didn't even need to use a trace flag to begin with. They could have just gone ahead and set the file sizes correct. And for majority of the time, for majority of the scenarios, they would actually end up with uh, file sizes that were equal, as you can see here. So uh, it's always great to have a good discussion. In fact, uh, we had a similar discussion <laughs> just about a few weeks back where we noticed some weird behavior of uh, the uh, the file sizes in the transaction log file in bulk recovery model. I'll go ahead and uh, send you that link as well because that was a very interesting discussion that happened. Uh, we had Jeff and we had uh, a couple of other MCM, MCQ, MEV guys on, uh, on that discussion as well. So I'm sure uh, we'll be having a lot more discussions. It's always fun to meet uh, uh, colleagues uh, who are as passionate about SQL Server and internals and uh, I hope this clears it up. I mean, uh, as you can see, uh, we both have a demonstrable script and it's usually funny to see weird behavior kick in in very edge case scenarios like this. But uh, it was a great discussion. I'll, uh, I'll just wait for you to uh, put your thoughts in or would you like me to just summarize it and leave it on LinkedIn? Either way, uh, please drop me a mail. It's always great to hear from you. Thanks. Bye-bye.